G'day mate and welcome to today I learnt for Factorio version 17. So there's been lots of changes and I'm covering old stuff and new stuff, a little bit of all the stuff, um, but let's go through the list. So um, first thing I want to start with is our reach distance. So in the past it used to be six tiles and at seven tiles we couldn't reach any further. We've got an upgrade. It's now 10. So I can now reach 10 tiles away so you'll notice a lot more often you're not getting that that lovely blurp sound um, because now you can actually reach to a lot of places uh, on top of that the, the the very next thing I have to tell everybody in case you you don't know it already is the alt mode it's now here down, down here as a button if you click it it will show you what's in all the boxes and in the smelters and and in all all the items it is a very important thing to to turn on um, it's going to make such a difference to your gameplay next thing i need to show off is the splitters so splitters have for a long time now had a input and output priority along with a filter option so as you can see i have filtered all the iron plate to the left hand side and it's come down here and it's been filtered onto the left hand side copper is allowed to pass straight through but all the iron and only the iron will go to the left hand side uh, or, or, yeah, to left hand side of the splitter. It, it, it will not let any iron on the right hand side. Um, it makes a really, really big difference if you've got contaminated outposts. Um, really, really makes a difference there. So, next off, I want to show off what's burnable. Um, as you can see, I've used the same method to filter things out. And we have wood, coal, solid fuel, uh, nuclear fuel, and rocket fuel. And if I just dump this on here, this will auto filter and auto sort. And you can see the burner miner drills are picking up the wood, the coal, the solid fuel, the rocket fuel, and um, the nuclear fuel. Yes, you can put nuclear fuel into a burner burner inserter. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It will run for just about forever. The things that are no longer burnable, wooden power poles, and you can press Z to drop things onto a belt, and we'll see they'll pass straight through the system because they're not being told to be filtered off anywhere come down here and sit beside this burner um, sit beside the the burner inserter forever waiting to be picked up will never be picked up uh, wooden boxes same story are no longer burnable um, only thing you can do is put all your wooden boxes in a wooden box and shoot it that's pretty much the only thing you can do with them uh, along with your wooden power poles next off I want to show off uh, belt braiding so this is where we take our yellow belt and we underground it we take a red belt and we underground underneath the yellow and then we can take a blue belt and even do the same um, and if we just turn on our power for half a second you can see I have three different resources coming in at one end and three different resources coming out at the other end no contamination no no whatsoever it is a really really good trick if you're really in a bind and you really need to get places you know things from a to b um, at the same time you can run a yellow belt in one direction and a red belt in the other direction or vice versa any combination of the above without any hassles whatsoever um, makes for a very very interesting base at some stages so um i wanted to show off the p menu for production stats lots of people know this um, i've obviously produced some stuff at some time um, the production stats got a major upgrade and is now very, very different how it used to look. Um, it also has a 250 hour and a thousand hour production graph. Uh, we have the K graph, which is your kills. Um, again, all the way through, obviously I, I don't have any biters on this map, so not a lot of kills here. We have the logistics area. So you can pick which logistic networks you're looking at and what's currently in that whole logistics network. As I have only have one RoboPort, this is all that's in that logistics area. Um, and you can see even what what entities that are part of the ro of that logistics network, um, how many passive providers, RoboPorts, construction robots, logistics robots, all that sort of stuff. Um, so P for production, K for L, uh, K, K for kills, L for logistics, uh, B for blueprints because that's still hit, yeah, that, that still hasn't been upgraded to the new version we were hoping for. And of course, M for map view. Uh, one of the updates for 17 is we can now hold down control and alt and map ping around the area. 
Um, same time, you can have other people click these areas to get quickly taken to that spot. Uh, power. I am definitely more than 10 tiles away, but power, clicking on a power network is not bound by your reach distance. So it also technically means you can click on a power switch on a remote output post and turn it off. So because the power network for, for these three inserters is only running through this power switch, I can actually turn that off remotely. Uh, armor now no longer has a durability flag. Um, not many people lost their power armor from repeatedly dying, but definitely with the light armor and the heavy armor, you might have noticed that green bar slides down as you lose your lives, many, many lives to, to the bite of vernum. Um, that's also disappeared. The chat bar, as you can see, now has, well, it, it, it's a lot smarter. We can now click locations. We can also drag and drop things in there like our power armor or belts, um, iron plate, all that sort of stuff. And you can now click on details and get de details of things. If somebody has a power armor with and pops it into chat, uh, you can see what's in their power armor. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in single player. It is a multiplayer only uh, item. Uh, the chat is bound to, and I'll show up, I'll show the option shortly. Um, the chat is bound to the title bar, which is beside one. Um, I'll actually go in the config in a minute and show where the option is. This section down here, which shows your blueprints, your deconstruction planner, the upgrade planner, all that sort of stuff is locked behind the technology that gives you robots. So, um, and it's also locked right there, the ghost rebuild timeout. So if a biter destroys something, a ghost automatically gets placed in its place, but that doesn't happen until you actually get this research done. There is a command and I'll be listed down in the description below. Uh, slash unlock hyphen shortcut hyphen bar whack that in there and that'll give you this whole bar or you can load a previous save that already has robots unlocked that's another way of, of accessing this bar once it's been unlocked for your player and your install it's permanently unlocked uh concrete and landfill and any other tile can be increased with the plus button on the numpad or decreased with the minus button, okay? So no more putting down concrete one tile at a time. Um, at the same time, you can see the green area is obviously the area I can build in. The yellow area is the um, is too far away for me to reach. Let's get some more concrete. And you can see that is now our reach area, okay? Um, 10 tiles in every direction. Uh, okay, so now that we have, oh, landfill's the same story. Uh, landfill, I can increase and decrease its size. Um, there are two new water types. Now, these are not in the default vanilla game. They are hidden behind the map editor that allow you to walk through the water. And as you can see, it's got a slight green tinge. Um, these are locked behind the map editor, so you're not going to find them in anything but a custom game. Uh, but the other change we have is robots can now... Oh, funnily enough, they can't... Because we can walk on that water, they can't landfill it. Um, robots can now landfill in lakes without an issue. But I can't build on it. Can't build on shallow water. Can't build on shallow water too. Okay, there you go. So yeah. Robots can now do your bidding and they can also now landfill. If you landfill a water well pump, it stays as a water well pump. It's still sucking up water from the underground water supply that's now no longer there. Um, steam engines. So <clears throat> the normal ratio is one water pump to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. So that's a simple one, one water pump. Put your 20 boilers in a row. Each boiler has two steam engines connected to it. 
Um, a very, very simple combination. What you can do in later game, or if you're short on space, is you can use a steam turbine. Steam turbine uses twice as much steam as a steam engine to make a smaller build. Um, we can also, now the robots are slightly smarter, use a robot to destroy the cliffs. And my robots obviously run super fast. So yeah, the normal ratio is uh, one water to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines in this sort of combination. Uh, another change, well, another change. Uh, another thing you can do is you can pass coal or a burnables through your boilers. I don't, I honestly don't recommend it because you can see how fast it's being burnt up. Um, it doesn't give a lot of chance for the next inserter to grab some coal out and feed it along. You'll generally find out your first, your first quite a few boilers will be constantly without fuel. Um, it is possible, don't recommend it, just so you know. Uh, you can also do the same with gun turrets. So if I slide that out, out, out of the way and I select ammo, we can see our gun, gun turrets are having a pass through method. And when that's got 10, that one will get 10, that one will get 10, that one will get 10. It does work. Again, don't really recommend it, but it does exist. Labs also have a pass-through. Uh, at the same time, everybody knows we can use R to rotate uh, around in a clockwise direction. You can also use Shift-R to go anti-clockwise. Um, labs have had an upgrade, even though they have no research running. They will automatically move research packs through the labs and make sure all the research packs are full. So even if I put down something like space science, you can see they're already being filled up for space science, ready for me to pick a science. Um, small change, different change. Uh, okay, in the options menu, I've had quite a number of changes in the options menu and I really recommend people have a look through the new options menu and actually read it. So in the graphics, not a lot of changes. There is show smoke, which is clearly marked here, disabled to increase performance on low-end video cards. Because of the optimizations and changes in 17, 99% of people will never have to disable smoke again, but the option is there. Um, show decoratives is one that I have a habit of turning off, which will turn off some of this ground litter. Um, just personally, don't really like it too much. And I do know for YouTube videos, it... Um, it definitely makes the videos more interesting, but it adds a lot more file size and consequently, when everything's converted, you lose a little bit of quality in the end product. Uh, controls. Controls is a very long list. I really recommend people have a look through it, but this one here, Togga Lua Console, this is the one to open and close chat. It, very, very important command. I know with uh, a, a, Zerti, a Zerti keyboard layout, with 17 that got changed and a lot of people have had problems trying to find out how to open chat again this is where it is just open you, you open your options go to your control settings find that one set it to something you want um sounds as much unchanged um the only thing i've had some people comment about is the wind a lot of people have been turning the wind down they find it a little bit frustrating oh same with the graphics a lot of people turn off clouds because they get seasick um, I haven't had an issue, but yep, the options right there if you don't like it. Uh, interface. Interface, there's a lots of different changes in here. Um, one of the ones I like turning on is showing arrows in alt mode and showing combinator settings in alt mode. So we'll just turn those both on for a second. And now you can clearly see this is the end uh, inserters pick up from. This is where they're inserting to. Both boxes in 17 are now being highlighted. So you know exactly what inserter is picking up from and, and putting down into. Uh, combinators. Combinators are, are often used in, um, in uh, blueprints that people share around and, and people will try their best to write items like top is meant to be copper uh, bot 
is meant to be iron because they're doing some sort of complicated um and when you look at it like that it just looks a mess but if you open it up it looks it looks easy to read or sometimes people just use this combination say hey iron and copper are meant to go on this belt if we have that setting turned off entirely uh hang on back confirm back resume um combinator just looks like a combinator it doesn't actually tell you what it's doing um <clears throat> people often have interesting setups so you can see with with certain belt techniques like side loading into an underground which is a more blatant feature i guess in 17 you can see if i put a belt there it makes a nice little cutout and if i put some copper in there you can see it's it's sliding into the side of of this there we go you can see it's sliding into the side of there and out here um but yeah th this is one of the things that that players can do in in more advanced blueprints to move things around um so back to the settings interface settings so um common says it is one i like to turn on it, it's helpful to see what's inside everything if you don't like it you can always turn it off you can always turn off the whole alt mode uh, active quick bars so this is this our, our good old trusty tool bar bar in the, in the past it defaults to two there is an option here to turn it up to four and straight away i have four tool toolbars there will be a separate video coming out on the toolbar um in a future video uh, it, it's a fairly in-depth topic with lots of changes so i do need to cover that um the ones that things i will cover really really quickly right now is you can drag and drop anything you want on there you can also middle mouse button and select anything and if you don't want it on there just middle mouse button on it again and it will disappear um but yeah it, it, it's waiting for its own video uh at the same time settings interface we have a train visualization length it does default to five okay it's been five for a long time which means if i take a train signal and i pop it here you can see it shows me five five train lengths behind that signal if i go back in the settings oops uh, other wrong one again and set that all the way up to the maximum of 12 thinking that nobody will build a train that's longer than 12 long, uh, I can now see every single locomotive section from my signal all the way back 12 train lengths. So that's, again, massive, massive change. Really, really helps us out. Uh, and wanted to cover pumps. So this, again, been in 16 for a while, but you can see when I hover my mouse over, I can see exactly where the pump hooks up, depending on what tile it's on. Um, and the trick is not to have two pumps sitting too close together trying to use the same section of the wagon. Uh, and I can put one there again and it'll hook up to that particular tank. So that's one of the things that I wanted to cover as well. Uh, oh, and last thing was under other, this is where the auto setting uh, save settings are. So we can go from one minute to never Lots of options there. Um, personally, I find about 20 minutes is about enough. You know, it all depends on how often you die and how often you want to avoid your deaths. Uh, saves in there. Uh, last thing I wanted to cover, and this only happens when you set a new game, is under the advanced settings is the research queue. Now, after you finish the game, after you have infinite tech, it automatically turns on. You can turn it on right from square one. Okay, um, personally, I, I really, really like the research queue, but it means I can pick automation, hit start research, and straight away, no, look, after that, I need gun turrets. This is a death world, I need gun turrets. And as soon as my labs are finished doing this research, they'll instantly move on to the second research. You can al already see electronics here has had a change of color, which means when I've done one of my current researches, this unlocks, and if I hit start research, another thing's unlocked. Uh, let's pick something that gives us a bit more of a branch into the network. Uh, green science. Hey, now we're unlocking all sorts of stuff. Okay, so you can see th some things are dependent. If I close that, it'll delete everything in the research queue that was sub-dependent on it. 
Um, same as if I do that, that's a red and green science. If I delete the green science, that'll remove that as well. Um, there is no way to drag and drop, okay? If you wanna change the order of things, you need to remove them and reset them back up. Um, I can't I can't add something in before the queue, you know, uh, rather than something else. It is something we're all hoping Woob does change to let us drag items forward and backward or even get a, a left and right key so we can just move that up a slot, move it up another slot. Um, some sort of change in there would be awesome. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter than normal, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because there will be another video coming out very, very sh soon covering the shortcut quick quick bar down here um i'm hoping i can do it justice because there has been a lot of changes anyway thank you guys so much for for watching and i do hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one all right bye